Today I'm going to show you how to turn this picture of a teddy bear into this animation of a teddy bear waving up and down. As a matter of fact, it's not just text-based, we control exactly how he moves his head and how he waves his hand with a crude input that looks like this. And I'm going to show you how to create that animation with our tools, which then gets turned into warped noise. As per our paper, go with the flow, which then gets turned into that final animation that you see over here. All right, let's get started. The first thing that you're going to want to do is to download a repository, git clone it, and then follow the rest of the video. Let's animate a teddy bear together using go with the flow. So I've cloned the repository and I want to make this teddy bear wave hello and maybe shake his head a little bit. So first I'm going to copy that URL and then I'm going to run python animation gui.py. So first it asks you to enter the URL of the picture. I'll enter that URL. Now it asks for a video caption. I find that you can get nice captions by using this hugging face space over here. So I might ask for a teddy bear waving his arm and shaking his head. The teddy bear is on a blue wooden background. Okay, let's see what it gives us. I'll take that caption and I'll paste it into here. It will suggest a title for us. We can use Teddy Bear Day or I can just say Teddy. That will be the title of our output. How many layers? Well, there's two things we want to move. We want to move the hand and we want to move the head. So I will say that we have two layers. The first layer. Let's say that the hand is in the back. If the hand is in the back, it should be on layer one. That means the head will come in front. I'm gonna select the region that I want to move, which is over here, and I'm gonna click the X and that will let me go to the second phase where I left click in the GUI over here. And I can create a motion path for it by left clicking. Now, if I want to undo, I just right click. And that will maybe bring me back there. So I will click here and I want him to bring his hand down a little bit. Maybe pause and then back up. And maybe we'll do that again. Okay. So that will make him shake his hand a little. I'm going to click the X and just wait a second as it processes it. Okay. The next layer will be the head. I'm going to have the head slightly tilt towards the left. So I'm going to select the head over here. It can be approximate. You don't have to be perfect. It will know what you're trying to do. All right, I've roughly selected the head. I click the X button. And now I'm going to play with the rotation. So keyframe one, keyframe two, these will go all the way until the end of the animation. So if I have five keyframes, for example, it will take just as much time to go through five keyframes as it does to go through two keyframes. The time will be scaled proportionally. So if I click one point here, that will become my origin of rotation for the second point. Play around with it. You'll see what I'm talking about. But in any case, I'm going to click to move the head a little bit to the left and have a little bit of rotation like this. That'll do nicely. Of course, if I wanted the head to get bigger, I could drag up the scale. And if I wanted the head to get smaller, I could drag it down. But I don't think we're going to change the teddy bear's head size today. I click the X button. And now it is doing some stuff. 
You can see the noise being warped over here. And now it's doing a little bit of extra processing on that noise. And it has finished. Here's what the animation looks like. Here's the crude animation that we're going to work with. So it tells me what it's saved here. For your purposes, you either want to use teddy.mp4, or more likely we'll, we'll use the saved cartridge, which is teddycartridge.pickle. You can ignore the masks and the shape unless you're doing ablations and baseline testing. This is useful if you want to compare it to something like drag anything, because it exports the polygons that we selected, and you can use that geometry data to run different baselines. But if you're a normal user, really you only need the cartridge file, which contains the warped noise, it contains the prompt, and it contains the frames of this video. The saved video just contains this crude animation that you see here, which can also be useful in different circumstances. But since the cartridge is super convenient, we'll use that for the rest of this tutorial. I press Control-C to exit, and I can open Teddy. And the folder opens up, showing all these different files, like teddy.mp4. Teddy.mp4 has 49 frames at 720p, which is exactly what CogVidX uses. This pickle file is the one that we'll be uploading to the server to process for the diffusion model. Upload it to a server that has an RTX 3090 on it. We need a GPU that has decent VRAM. 12 gigabytes is probably good enough. Um, so I take this pickle file and I upload it to the server. Now I've already uploaded it to save some time, but I'm using a program called File Browser to do this. In case you don't know about it, File Browser is basically a web server that you can run on a remote computer that will give you a graphical user interface for browsing files. And so I happen to use that to upload the teddycartridge.pickle file. It's in the same directory as the ryaninfer.py. And so I'm going to run Python ryaninfer.py and I'm going to pass it the teddycartridge.pickle file along with the output mp4 that I want, teddyoutput.mp4 and the device which is just going to be CUDA, and the number of diffusion steps, which is 30. And in addition to that, I'm also going to specify the degradation level, which by default is 0.5, but to be explicit here, dash dash dig degradation 0.5. And so I just run that. All the necessary models will be downloaded um, and then this is going to take a while to run. Oh, right, I forgot. There's going to be an error raised if you try to overwrite a previous file for your own safety. So I'm just going to rename this Teddy Output Copy .mp4. That should be okay. Because the example that I'm going to show you, I've already pre-computed this so that you don't have to wait for up to 10 or even seven minutes. Um, is ready to go for me to show for you. So this is the output. There are a few different files that it outputs, but on the left you see the input, which was the screwed animation that we generated, along with the warped noise. We're visualizing the first three out of the 16 channels that uh, Cog Video X uses. And the output on the right, which is the teddy waving his hand and shaking his head. So that's in the preview mp4.gif file. Additionally, we save that uh, preview file as an mp4 for you. And we also save just the raw output file itself, which is this. 
And there you have it. We'll be releasing new tutorials for other applications, such as camera motion and motion transfer later. As for right now, thank you for watching.